Thank you. Thanks very much. I was going to dress like Magnum PI tonight too, but. Um, <laughs> I'm not tall enough. <laughs> I'm afraid. We got in the car. It was a 2006 Audi All Road, and she put all of the windows down and opened the sunroof, and we sang Allison Cross in Union Station, and Bob Dylan, and Van Morrison, and anything else we could sing at the top of our lungs for about six hours. And we were going to the end of the Gunflint Trail. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever been to the Gunflint Trail. It's, a, it's way up in northwestern Minnesota. I know I am not Minnesota guy, 48. But we <laughs> were going up there, and I swear to God, the directions are like this. You head on 35 North until it's a scenic road, and you go on the shores of Lake Superior, and then you make a left at a particular intersection, and, then, and the, the directions are this. Go until the road ends. And you drive 80 miles into the National Forest. You leave everything behind, everything. And there's one store, and it sells Band-Aids and firewood, and they have a landmine, and you might get ice, depending on what time you get there. Um, fish worms, and they have fish worms. So you, you get to the end of the Gunflint Trail. We were meeting four other friends, and the six of us set up camp. And um, we had made dinner, and we built a fire, and we got drunk um, until the coals were just barely flickering. And we went into our tent. Well, my best friend and I, had decided, regardless of the co-ed nature of our tent bunking, we were going to give it a shot. So we, we did. And uh, I'm happy to report that there were no scandalous uh, you know, behaviors. So I, uh, I wake up the next day, and I'm reflecting on, uh, we, we all get in the car and we go to a, 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 about another three hours to, to a place called Palisade Head. Palisade Head is a state park in Minnesota, and it is essentially a scenic overlook over Lake Superior. Now, Lake Superior, of course, is the largest lake in the world, so it's a lot more like an ocean. And it's just the six of us. And we're on the shores of Lake Superior, 150 foot cliffs, rocky and gorgeous. And uh, we're whispering among ourselves, and I think most of us are sitting there taking pictures and, and, and just generally enjoying the silence, uh, thinking about how small and insignificant we all are. But I'm thinking about her. <laughs> you see, it rained that night, and this was the 4th of July, I think it was 2010. Northern Minnesota is a lot like Canada. It still gets pretty chilly uh, in July. And so the temperatures dropped a little bit lower than we thought. We, we, well, we were forced to huddle for warmth. And I sat there looking over what could have been an ocean, and I thought, was that a slightly spoon-shaped figure, were we really in two sleeping bags, or what? Well, on the way home from Palisade Head, we, we struck up a conversation, all six of us piled into this Audi, and we talked about showing up. And I, do you know what I mean when I say showing up? I mean, uh, the, the value in showing up for somebody. I mean, not, not just being there, like, you know, when somebody says, hey, will you come to Story Slam? No, I, I mean, being emotionally accessible. Being, being mentally present, being spiritually present for somebody, being showing up for somebody. We talked about that. And everybody had a different opinion, but she and I, we had the same kind of opinion. We, we, had, we agreed that, you know, I was recently divorced, maybe less than two years earlier I was divorced, and, and I, we agreed that, like, 
what you should hope for, and this is not for everybody, but for us, we've decided what we should hope for is for somebody to love you and show up for you as, as much as they can and as well as they can and for as long as they can and, and, and to really, you know, that road trip, that's what that taught me. Um, well, right now she's in Indonesia. Her name's Samantha. Uh, on October 19th, 2013, I got the opportunity to stand across from her and promise her that I would show up and love her as well as I could, as much as I could for as long as I could. Um, and on Friday night, she'll come home and uh, we'll sleep together. And she'll be my wife of a year and a half. And I'll tell her all about the story slam and well, we'll probably get drunk. 